So warm welcome to everybody and especially to to uh, to Swipe. So I have Dan Glenn and uh, Patrice Meillon with me today to present the company and then I'll come back with the Q&A in the end. So let's kick it off. Over to you. That's all. Very simple agenda today. So Swipe in brief. We are a biometric authentication technology company. Um, we are headquartered in Oslo and we are listed in both Sweden and Norway. We are a very global company, so we have about 40 employees in 12 different countries, so small but very diverse. As you can tell, I'm American. Um, we have basically the same core technology platform comprising hardware, software, biometric algorithms, manufacturing, design, support that underpins two unique business lines, one for payments and one for access control. And the only difference between the two kind of solutions is the applets that are deployed on the cards in each business line. So a little bit my thunder was stolen here by the panel discussion, but here at least you can see the, the numbers here. You know, there is a lot of talk and there is a lot of expectation that uh, digital wallets are taking over the world, but that is just patently not the case. And you can see that in the kind of figures that we show here. As Patrice referred to, the card transactions are still significantly higher than digital in four out of five regions by a very good margin. Um, and specifically <coughs> in the area that we pay with uh, play with contactless cards, I mean, these are expected to have, I mean, uh, to be ubiquitous, um, certainly pretty much now and certainly by 2026. Um, within contactless cards, which are essentially all the payment cards that are out there, when consumers are kind of aware that biometric cards even exist, you know, our surveys that we have done um, really indicate that there is strong consumer demand for this. So this is, you know, as much a function of kind of creating market awareness as it is anything else. Um, so within, uh, so with Patrice, again, you referred to these figures. I mean, three billion plus cards issued annually, you know, not growing particularly fast, but not declining either. Um, and then within the payment, you know, cards, three billion, what segment or what percentage of that uh, is going to end up being biometric payment cards? And the honest answer is we don't know yet because it hasn't really, you know, we haven't really seen true market adoption yet, but forecasts range from 2% to 20%. And any way you kind of cut the pie here, you get to a very large uh, finger of a figure of biometric payment cards that are potentially in the market, uh, certainly by the end of this decade. Um, Patrice, I don't know if you want to take over here. Sure. So when it comes to the uh, offering, so we, we offer the, a platform which consists in uh, hardware and software, so the components to put together the complete card. Actually, I, I can circulate two of those so that you can get a feel of what it is. So we, we, we do provide, of course, uh, you know, the, the solution with the fingerprint sensor, the payment chip, all the software that goes on top of it, and also very importantly, for you know the, the the customer to be registered or enrolled, we need to provide some solutions for uh, enrollment. That's what we do, and the main benefits to issuers and consumers are, of course, you know the security of that because only you can be uh, can be uh, can be using the the card. The convenience it's just as simple as paying contactless with another card. The privacy again because there's no database that's created of your biometric data. Your biometric data has got a, like a, a, a model. It's not, a, it's not a picture, it's a mathematical model that's stored into the secure element of the chip. So there's no da database. Of course, this is innovative. And we know that post-COVID, I mean, people have got also the need to, I would say, hygiene. And uh, there's a certain reluctance to touch the the payment terminal. So those are the benefits that we bring to the to the party. <coughs> and when we comes to what we do, uh, we as a company strive to offer support end to end. So you've got here the value chain. I will not go into the details, but the payment value chain are quite complex. And to make sure that this goes all the way to be deployed to the market, you need to support the card makers, the personalizers, the processors, and the issuers. And that's what we do at various steps of the way. So we take charge of making sure that anybody who's got a problem here, we can support. 
that makes us quite unique in that uh, game. <coughs> uh, well, again, that's what I so th that's what I was uh, alluding to in the previous uh, slide. You know, we offer a turnkey solution. We're a company that do just that, so we're totally focused on biometric solutions. To date, we are certified by the two main schemes, Visa and Mastercard, and we're the only platform with that level of uh, certification and integration. And we, uh, our customers are telling us that they trust our advice. And again, we want to make sure that everything is ironed out to go to the market, and thus we act as what uh, we call uh, being an end-to-end -end implementation partner. <coughs> Yeah, and then, so, do you want to cover that? No, no, you can uh, so carry on. So, the, the, uh, as we said, we've got, with the same technology, we're addressing two market payment and access. Access markets, so access control, when you want to enter the buildings and stuff like that. Uh, there's a very strong need for increased security. That's the world we live in. And uh, you've got here a chart with the number of readers that are being sold annually. So that's like 7 million going up to nearly 11 million next year. And uh, there's an estimation that approximately half a billion s access cards will be shipped in 2024. So this is, a, again, a, a market that is a, a very strong, I would say, growing market for uh, and potential for, for us. So what we do here is that we've been talking a lot about Visa and MasterCard in the payment space. In the access space, we are, uh, I would say, supporting access protocols of um, two types, one called HID, another one Legic, which are very prominent in some particular verticals and areas of the world. And uh, thus, we can also be compatible with existing infrastructure. That's a very strong uh, selling point, is that you don't need to change the infrastructure. The reader is already existing. And instead of having just a regular contactless card, you bring a biometric uh, contactless card. <coughs> yeah, so the, I mean, the benefits here again are that uh, if you want to upgrade an access control system to biometry, Upgrading the card is cost effective. Alternative could be to have like cameras or or biometric readers. It's a lot more expensive. Um, it's uh, it's also very fast in terms of biometric authentication uh, compared to some other systems. And I would just single out another one, which is that you don't need for the 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 company running the infrastructure. They don't need to create a biometric database which is a problem on twofold. One is regulation, because in Europe, it's very complex to store biometric data of people without complying to a lot of, I would say, restrictions. Thankfully, I would say, like GDPR, right? And uh, also, in terms of uh, maintaining such a database, it's a lot of work and hence money to make sure that your database is always up to date. For us, I mean, the biometric is in the card. That's it. No need for database. Every user has got its biometric in the card. So, so I mean, it makes it, uh, you know, that's what we say. It's cost effective, it's reliable, and GDPR, so GDPR is the European regulation of, uh, for data privacy uh, compliant. <coughs> Here again, same as the for the payment, value chain is different, but we support every step of the value chain to help, again, people implementing our solution. And I don't think I, we want to go into the details of that. We can probably go to the next yeah, slide. So I think I can kind of take over now. Yeah. I think th um, the critical message that we want to convey here is that we expect 2023 to be an inflection point actually for both markets. Uh, 2022 was a really important year for Swipe. Uh, we completed or we got certified by both Visa and MasterCard. Several of our SEM customers also received certification. We have uh, several pilots underway, certainly on the payment side. And in Access, we completed a pilot at Frankfurt International Airport. And that one kind of came out of the blue, where Fraport, who runs 30 international airports, kind of came to us and selected us as 
one of two providers um, because they were specifically doing a uh, test on biometric access control solutions at Frankfurt. And this meant that employees at Frankfurt Airport were actually using our solution on a daily basis in real life. And we successfully uh, passed all the tests that were required and are kind of in this waiting phase where we're waiting for them to move to commercial tender process. Um, specifically, when we talk about biometric payment cards, if we look at you know the kind of innovation that's happened in the payment card industry over the last three decades, chip and pin cards were first introduced in 1995, and it took 18 years to get to one billion cards deployed. Um, and that obviously required a complete change of infrastructure, complete change of payment terminals and things like that. The first contactless payment cards were introduced in 2007 by Barclays, again requiring an upgrade of existing infrastructure, and it only took eight years to get to one billion cards. So the half-life here is obviously shortening. Um, and if you look now, let's say we're in kind of launch phase, hopefully now, um, I think there's good reason to believe that it's certainly not going to be eight years for biometric payment cards to potentially get to a billion uh, units deployed annually. Um, what we saw last year, and this is, you know, I think a critical point, I think everybody, all the players in this market want traction and kind of what is happening in the broader market is good for everyone that's involved. So at the end of last year, there were a significant, there was a significant increase in the kind of pace of uh, both pilots and commercial launches. And I think it's important to indicate that this is not a very comprehensive, non-exhaustive list. This is just the ones that have been announced. And very excitingly, actually on Tuesday, Zwipe announced our first live commercial launch uh, with Kuwait International Bank, which means that our cards are live and in the market and being used by consumers in Kuwait. So that is why our CEO is not here. He's currently at uh, the seamless event in the Middle East. And there's a lot of exciting stuff happening there. Um, one other point that I d that's not actually shown in this presentation, but you know, in access in the first quarter alone, we have 15 proofs of concept that are kind of moving forward in the next couple of months. So the traction that we have in the access control market is actually quite astonishing in a very short period of time. Um, we, we did complete a rights issue in the first quarter, um, and really this is about scaling the organization, accelerating go-to-market, accelerating more pi pilots more efficiently, getting our SCM customers uh, industrialized and ready to go in manufacturing cards. Um, we do expect there to be you know, quite a lot of kind of value inflection points this year. You, know, you kind of see it's geared towards the second half of 2023 and 2024, but you know, announcing pilots moving to commercial launch, announcing new pilots, uh, announcing commercial launch of some of these proofs of concept that we're doing in Access are kind of the things to look out for. Um, and I think I'm kind of at the end of my presentation, but this is the, the summary of what it is that we do and where we think our, what our value, value proposition is. Maybe let's start by you had the biometric payment cards kind of uh, the penetration rates. You had a fast NAR and the slow scenario. And at the same time, you're talking about the eight years and you're talking about it being shorter than eight years. And just doing back, just doing some math in the back of my head, that doesn't correlate at all to the neither the rapid nor the slow uptake curve. So what kind of behind these assumptions, the kind of 10% penetration rate or 8% penetra penetration rate and 2.5% and penetration rate by 26, 27. So again, these are all external research providers that were shown in that kind of 10%. And again, you know, okay, so yeah. ABI research is somewhere between 2 and 8.6%. Mm -hmm. There are other, I, I don't want to name names, but there are other research or organizations that's out there kind of saying that this could be as high as 30%. So that's where you get to okay, these okay, kind of numbers. Okay. Let, let's maybe talk a little bit about the value chain and where you are. And, and let's start by the payment. So, <coughs> well, there are basically two co two companies making the, uh, well, you have three card manufacturers that have 70% of the market. And then you have tier two and tier three, which account for the remaining 30. And then you have Infineon, ST Micron, you have, well, a lot of component manufacturers who then deliver directly to the tier one card manufacturers. Where Can you explain simply where do you fit into this and what is your customer? So and who is your customer? Right, I, I think the one word that we can use to describe us best is we're an integrator, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's like, uh, so we, we, we take um, a bunch of components, hardware and software, and we put together a solution 
right? Then we don't produce this solution in volume. That's what our customers do. So if you want our suppliers and partners are developing components, hardware or software, we put all this together into a platform, a solution that we get certified by the likes of Visa, MasterCard in payment, or HID and Legic in access. And then we sell this solution and we will sell the solution mm -hmm. to people who are going to produce it in volume. So our direct customers in payment would be the card makers. That's where we sit in the value chain. The card makers. And, and then we talk the card makers, if I get things right, there's a tier two, tier three. Yeah. So below the, the big three ones. And right. So yes, definitely. Or the tier two and the tier three would mm -hmm. be our, let, um, if you want, our main target, if I can use that word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, s somebody wants to get it. And and I mean you talk a lot about the you talk a lot about the market being taken off as we speak. So twenty twenty three will be kind of a key year. And let's talk about like tangible evidence is a hard word, but if you look at actual signs versus kind of expectations, where do you stand on this scale in terms of you have a lot of pilots but and there's a lot of discussions, there's a lot of um offerings and, and well discussions and pipeline etc but where do you st if, if you scale this if you have a scale where do you stand how much tangible signs are there that this is actually happening and how much is expectations because we've been waiting for this market to take off for some time and it's taken longer than we expected yeah i mean i think the the tangible evidence is really kind of in this list that we show here where i mean these are announced pilots again it's not exhaustive I mean, I think what everybody in the market is waiting for, and I think this is kind of what's needed. I think there are three things that are needed. I don't think it's necessarily cost of card. That's the most important thing. As we've alluded to, metal cards have taken off at a, you know, at a very significant price point. We think it's consumer awareness. Mm -hmm. we th and then from there, I think it's one bank that has some global name recognition, even offering this to a very tiny segment of their customers, or potentially it's one of the big fintechs uh, kind of moving forward with this as could be the tipping point. Um, if we looked at what we just announced in the Middle East with Kuwait International Bank, again, we kind of expect that to get the market moving there. So I don't know exactly what the tipping point is going to be, but I think we're very close. close. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and maybe spend it, we have a couple of minutes left, and let's maybe spend it a little bit on access and Fraport. So what y you've done some trials with Fraport, and is it is it right to say that this is taking off and the potential is bigger but access is maybe going to be faster but not as big in the end is that the right conclusion i don't know if that's the right conclusion actually i would say that i think the decision making process in access control is not nearly uh, as long as it probably is it with banks mm -hmm. which tend to be very large hierarchies we think access control, because in many cases we are speaking actually to the direct end customer, mm -hmm. the decision-making process is shorter. And it was alluded to by somebody earlier that access control is a much more fragmented market. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it actually means that the decision-making pro process is faster. And if you look at, you know, so Fraport, again, this big global organization, but Frankfurt, they can make an independent decision to kind of move forward mm -hmm. with access control. It doesn't have to be a Fraport-wide thing. Um, if we look at you know what we've announced already in Q1 this year with Richmond International Airport, again, it's not JFK, but we're still talking about 20,000 employees. We're talking about a, a pilot that's being run in conjunction with the Safe Skies Alliance in the United States, where the, the kind of outcome of the pilot that's being operated now will be shared to all kind of Safe Skies Alliance members. Mm -hmm. well, there's the <laughs> floor, but we do think the access control is potentially quicker to market and I would not yeah. agree that it's necessarily uh, the, s the smaller market. Okay, but it's easier to see that it's maybe taken off faster yeah. than the cards will be and then we'll see what the cards will do and how long it'll take but, but you will have to take off in the access cards faster. Yes. But nevertheless in both markets 2023 20 is going to be an important year. Mm -hmm. I think unfortunately our time is, <laughs> up. <laughs> time is up uh, and I think somebody else will want the room. So thank you very much.